morning everybody today i welcome you all for the next series of lecture that is host pathogen interaction we did enzymes and toxins and tomorrow we are going to do the nutrition and fungi and this host pathogen interaction is an important link a bridge between these two topics enzymes and toxins and nutrition and fungi hope you should have revised the enzymes and toxins and today we are doing the host pathogen interaction any problem revert back to me right so this topic is not important from msc point of view but it is important from indian forest services is right oct ugc every uh, uh, basic points are there in this topic right so stay indoors stay safe stay on i will be right back in a moment good morning everybody i welcome you for today's topic that is host pathogen interaction right i already told you that host pathogen interaction topic is a bridge between the topic we did yesterday that is a role of enzymes and toxin and topic we are doing day after today that is tomorrow or that is nutrition and fungi host pathogen interaction we it's a first saying that all pathogens are parasites but all parasites are not pathogen while dealing with the plant diseases an interaction between the disease causing organism and host is termed as host pathogen interaction right the first we will deal is the inoculum inoculum is the part of pathogen coming in contact with the host to cause infection it is called inoculum see here in the this uh, we have the fungal spore as inoculum and this fungal spore comes in contact with the leaf first it form a germ tube and then aprisporia and then the infection threads whether it is in leaf or through wound or through lenticles whereas the other examples are active mycelium in case of rhizoctonia dormant mycelium in case of australigotritici and sclerotia in case of claviceps the example list is endless we can here also take the urodespores and asiospores in case of the paxenia graminin striticae causing black rust of wheat second is the inoculum potential the term inoculum potential is defined as the number of infecting particles present in the environment of infected host see if this is the leaf and the number of i i draw one but there are thousands of the number of basically the infecting particle means fungal spore in this leaf area it is called inoculum potential whereas uh, garrett in 1956 redefined that it is the energy of pathogen available for infection of a host at the surface of host organ to be infected but garrett said it is related to the energy of pathogen means see the energy of pathogen to penetrate how many pathogens will penetrate and this is in oculum potential next we are coming to on the topic called pathogenesis an important topic and this comes in basically in the papers write an essay on the pathogenesis in host pathogen interaction it is basically a sequence of process in disease development from initial contact between the pathogen and the host to the completion of the disease symptoms initial contact means in oculum and host to the completion of disease symptoms means uh, as we have as disease symptoms like chlorosis and necrosis pathogenesis can be studied in three pre penetration post penetration and uh, penetration and post penetration first is pre penetration this stage includes the interaction of host and pathogen before penetration right and this pre penetration is basically studied in following stages that is spore germination spore germination whether conidia sporangia clematospores smut spores right asiospores they germinate on the with or without rest period so best example of pre is the modification in case of conidia of pericularia or rhizi that is blast of rice where we will see mucilage drops or fall these drops they attract or they also help in the sticking when it there is a dispersal so it is present in conidia of pericularia or rhizi or called gry gryzia blast of rice 
The second example we have the erysiphy gramini, graminis, which causes the disease of wheat, that is powdery mildew, and it produces short hypha. See hypha, this clamp, this right, and when this it disperses, it is helps the erysiphy graminis to stick, right. So now, now we are coming to the uh, spore germination. We have two areas, phylosphere. Phylosphere is the area which is just above the leaf. This It is inhibited by the fungi, bacteria, BCA, the blue-green algae. And uh, then these uh, they areas don't allow the other fungus to come because they act as a microparasitism. Or they can take the, all the substrate which is required fungus to survive. And it is not the, the substrate, the substratum is not suitable for the fungus. Like in gram in microcephalia and waxy leaf surface of apple inhibit germination of fungus spore. We did with detail in the structural modification in class, right? So, second part we are coming is the rhizosphere. Rhizosphere is the area which is around the root, right? It means the region of the soil surface, right, which is subjected to the influence of plant roots. Some root exudates, they provide stimulus for the spore germination of Pythium, Phytophthora and Rhizoctonia. The root exudates of turnip stimulate the germination of oospores of Pythium. The roots of alpha alpha stimulate the germination means roots created a chemical which uh, stimulate the germination of Saclerosium rolfi. So these all the examples of showing the uh, host and pathogen interaction, how it is helping, right? Then we are coming to the growth of germ tube. This fungal propagul, whether conidia zoos, for the germinate to form a germ tube. See, this is germ tube. And then it elongate on the surface, this elongate on the host surface and then it forming this bulb like structure called aprisporium or a plural we can say or aprisoria. And these aprisoria enters through the stomata and form the infection packs, right. So then in case of uh, Rhizoctonia solani, these uh, hyphae when infection comes inside, they will accumulate to form a cushion like structure and it called infected infection cushion from here it moves to the other parts right whereas in case of armillaria armillaria amelia which i explain later on also uh, fungus responsible for the root rot of the deciduous and coniferous forest trees it form a root like structure rhizomorphs this, this root like structure. The fungus forms a root like structure, right? So I am coming to the, uh, just showing you, see, this is the uh, cushion I told you, right? From here, cushion, you will see it is moving towards the other parts, right? Next, we will see this armelia melia it will form rhizomorph and it is root like structure and lot of mycelium you will see in it which are moving towards the other parts of the area right so this uh, we are coming to the next part that is the this we did and the next path we are uh, coming is the penetration Actual entry of pathogen into the host is called penetration and it is two type indirect and direct. These are very important. In papers either you will get the full pathogenesis or sometime examiner says I will give six mark question it will give the one of them and this is one of the important penetration. And actual entry of pathogen in the host is called penetration. Penetration is indirect. First, I said indirect penetration, it is through stomatal openings. That is entry through stomata, first point. Zoospores, when they fall, I already told you, they form a germ tube. 
and then aprisporia and th this is stomatal pore right and this is called indirect penetration from here it will i already told you here from here it will form the this infection packs and then the in threads infection threads and ultimately either it will form this cushion infection cushion or it will form root like structure right so the examples of uh, this are basically entry through uh, sorry entry through the uh, the paxenia graminostratici which cause the black stem rust of wheat phytophthora infestans that is late blight of potato irvinia mylovora very important infecting apples that is fire blight of apple plasma paraviticola infecting grapes right we have done in the class that is the downy mildew of grapes right so before going i just want to uh, just see this one this is called host pathogen interaction this is pathogen and this is basically the modes of transmission m o d e s modes of transmission and this is two type indirect and direct and we are doing indirect right and then this have a reservoir host which we did these are the reservoir host cushion and root like structure rhizomorphs and then we have the this roots of entry pathogen we did this we are doing reservoir host we did now roots roots we did the first we are doing is stomata besides those example which earlier i did that is the uh, just i did that is uh, paxenia graminostratici black stem rust of wheat phytophthora infesting infecting potato irvinia mylovora apples plasma para viticola four and then this we we have to add in the theory part right the notes you, which you have have only four but you have to add these these which are infecting stomata paranospora destructor infecting onion leaves mycosephrella musicola causing cigatoga disease of banana cladosporium fulvum infecting tomato an example of parasitic disease which are entering through stomata are pseudomonas tabecae in tobacco and xanthomonas malvasirum infecting cotton so these example should be added but those four are very important right so now we are coming to the next part before coming to the next part this we did right sorry this we did now we are coming to the next part that is the entry through lenticles so entry through lenticles is also important particularly soil borne pathogen like armillaria melia enters through lenticles which has rhizoma i explained thoroughly other example are streptomyces scabies which is cause or cause of scab of potato penicillium expansum causing apple rot and this nectria galligina that is apple canker these are four i given but i again tell you just add few more that is the uspora postulens causing potato scab nectaria galligina i told you apple canker armillaria melia they causing the root rot of deciduous and conifers trees right those four are important but you can add these two also right now we are coming to the third one that is through wounds the infection occurring through wounds is called wounds trauma or traumatic infection it is in phytophthora infestans tubers irvinia amylovora we did right now fire blight of apple fusarium solanae it is a wilt fungus because it produces stylosis besides these the viruses which are transmitted by insect vectors are bemisia tabecae white fly we did in viruses that is the one disease very prominent 
that is the yellow van mosaic yellow vein mosaic of bindi so other example uh, which we are adding in uh, wounds are xanthomonas stevotai the causal organism of bacterial wilt and thalaviopsis basicola which is tobago root rot of fungus then foams physiolai this wood rotting fungus then foams anosus fruit rotting fungus and last is the rhizopus and penicillium digitatum so please add these those four are very important but please add these also because they will give a thrust to your question when you are appearing in the msc and either at the competitive exams right so now the second part i told you here you see entry it is mode of transmission indirect we did and now i am doing this direct so direct penetration of the pathogen occurs through the cuticularized surface of epidermis there is no stomata directly enter through the cuticularized surface of epidermis the direct penetration has to cross morphological barriers i already explained we have we are doing we are doing the structural modification cutein pectin cellulose in enzymes we also explained it cellulosic enzymes very important biological barriers microorganisms that is phylosphere and rhizosphere just to date chemical barriers toxic substance and lack of nutrients we already did when we are doing the biochemical mechanism and one example is the chlorogenic acid and the best example of direct is the erysiphe graminis causing powdery mildew of wheat phytophthora infestans right infestans causing late blight of potato albugo candida candida is causing the white rust of crucifers so now it here it is very important you to explain the that is what are the melanized see this we have already did you notes you have right this is these are the cushions like structure see this is uh, basically the i am telling you here it is uh, necessary to describe melanized aprisporia the melanized aprisporia which attach firmly to the host surface and develop a massive turgor pressure in them to help penetrating the surface layers melanin is deposited in the aprisporial wall making it rigid and impermeable to solutes as the aprisporium matures then hydrostatic pressure hydrostatic pressure builds up within it until sufficient pressure is generated to push the infection pack down through cuticle inside the host right this is uh, basically called the uh, melanized infection so uh, just explaining uh, it further i will let you know the other part that is the here the melanin de uh, deposition in the cell wall of the aprisporium which i just explained is essential for maintaining high turgor pressure melanin becomes highly cross linked into the wall to sustain the physical pressure resulting from the high osmotic pressure specific example of this type of host penetration occur in the powdery mildew by blumeria blumeria is the new name old name is i already told you erysiphe species several several transporters including glucose amino acids have been identified in the fungal plasma membrane of blumeria graminis 
causal organism of wheat powdery mildew hostoria this also demonstrate that germ tube creep on leaf surface before entering the host the infected host cell enclose fungal hostoria in a extra hostorial membrane ehm which keep it separate from the host cytoplasm the scheme of penetration is shown in figure 3 c this is the uh, scheme of penetration here we have uh, conidium see this is the uh, conidium or fungus for host epidermis and then it moves and it is uh, uh, demonstrated that this fungal tube creep and this is proved by the fact that the infection which come inside it consists of glucose and amino acids right and this prove that these uh, germ tubes they creep i just told and then when it go inside and it will form a structure called ehm and this ehm just i told you this ehm uh, role is that which is called extra hostorial membrane which keeps the fungal separate from the host cytoplasm see this is the host cytoplasm and this is the ehm it, it separates right this is the basically the spore then germ tube the infection pack and then we have the infection threads or infection hyphae and then we have hostoria different types which i told you in class when it is knob shaped it is albugo canida when it is finger shaped it is in phytophthora infestans whereas pythium it does not have any hostoria right so uh, this is the basic uh, scheme of the direct penetration here you will see first the uh, fine tubular process right see fine tubular process this right and then this uh, fine tubular process uh, creeps and then ultimately this finer tubular process form a sub apical this sub apical aprisporia or we can say aprisporium which passes through the cuticle right and the melanized accumulate here and this melanized results in the turgor pressure right and this pressure helps to pass through the cuticular area and it comes down in form the lobed hostoria in case of erysiphy graminis and this is called melanized aprisporia so now we are coming to the last part of it that is the post penetration after successful penetration the pathogen proceeds further to establish proper infection this is called invasion so post penetration comes in the form of question called invasion explain invasion the so post penetration uh, uh, penetration it is first is ectoparasites ecto means superficial surface of the host and sends only the hostoria which i just explain in case of powdery mildew that is caused by the erysiphy uh, wheat we say gramini uh, erysiphy graminis also new name is blumeria and then the uh, next is the a uh, lot of example in ectoparasites but uh, then we are coming to the time constraint we are taking one endoparasites with external mycelium but it comes inside then the corticum solani stem canker of potato ophiobolus graminis take all disease of wheat this is very important in is it will come in match uh, of the disease ophiobolus graminis then third is the subcuticular this we did very detail venture venturi aniquilis apple scab here we have the epidermis and here this is cuticle and just below the cuticle and above the epidermis this is uh, fungus mycelium and this is this mycelium is called subcuticular then other example is diplocarpon rosi black spot disease of roses 
Then is the uh, fourth is the parasitism in parenchyma. Parenchyma means cortex pith mesophyll, and this is we did also albugo that is white rust of Cruciferus. Phytophthora we did is the late blight of uh, potato. Pithium that is damping disease of seedling. Right. So then parasites in uh, vascular tissues that is wilt fusarium which form tylosis and invade the uh, xylem vessels and tracheids. Then is the endobiotic. This disease is very important in our syllabus. Question will come, explain any, which of the following is the endobiotic disease. It is called by Synchiatrium endobioticum, that is its name, endobioticum. What disease of potato and Plasmodiophora brassicae. It causes the finger and toe disease of crucifer or it is also called club rot, club rot disease of crucifer. Here the root become 10 times swollen. Then we have the systemic infections which we did in the smarts downy mildews. And the last part of it is the role of enzymes and toxins in pathogenesis. Enzymes we did very in detail and toxins we did that is divided into three phytotoxins, right? And then uh, that is alternate case, one example we will take, vivotoxin, fusaric acid and pathotoxins, then we have the wildfire or victorin, right? So we have uh, already done very uh, in detail, that is host specific and non-specific toxins. But this wildfire, I again tell you, is non-specific. It's very important, right? So I come back to the uh, this topic again. To revise, this is the wheel of the host pathogen interaction. Pathogen we did, reservoir host we did, that is in case of Rhizoctonia solana infection question and Armelia milia, it is the rhizomorph or root like structure. Roots of entry we did, stomata, lenticles, wounds, right? And then we have done the mode of transmission, that is direct and indirect, right? Then we have uh, did is the uh, whole that is the host pathogen interaction. Here uh, in plant you will see uh, here it is leaf. Here if some wound is occur the fungal spore will come and it will form aprisporia and from aprisporia we will get the this infection thread. Right. If there is a fruit, fruit there is lenticle, then fungal spore will go and it will form aprisporia and this aprisporia will give the infection tube, which will give the infection mycelium through the lenticles. These are the lenticles, right? So these are the basically uh, different uh, types. And then I already told you last lecture also, if this is fungal spores, they interact to produce Enzymes. Enzymes are particularly cellulitic enzymes, lignolytic enzyme, proteolytic enzyme, peptic enzymes, and they dissolve the cellulose, hemicellulose lignin to enter. But these enzymes they also what did is they dissolve the cellulose into glucose, which provides energy to the and they also starch to maltose and then to glucose. And this provides a pathogen with aerobic and anaerobic respiration and ultimately the form of energy which is required it to survive and to perform its functions to enter the host, which I yesterday told treasure hunt. It has to come inside the uh, tissue, right? So this we did. This is the uh, direct we did rhizomorphs, root like structure we did. And this is very important. Here we have the indirect, indirect, uh, this we did very in explanation. Then this is cavity below that is substomatal ves vesicle. And uh, this is in Paxenia graminis stratici. And this is in Paranospora destructor, right? And see, this is in case of pseudo Paranospora cubensis germ tube and then it will form just infection threads and here swelling, this is a reservoir which store all the amino acids, glucose and then further gives the infections. So this uh, we finishes, this is the apical cushion, right? 
and this is the whole process of the infection. So this we finishes the uh, this topic. So uh, we finishes this topic, and I, I hope you understand. You understood it, and please revise it and try to make diagrams. And remember the examples. Tomorrow I will be back with the last series of these lectures of this topic that is the nutrition in fungi. It is very difficult to understand the nutrition in fungi if you don't know the these two last lecture role of enzymes and toxins right and this today lecture host pathogen interaction. When you came to know these then you will understand the tomorrow topic. Right? Okay then. Stay indoors. Stay safe. Bye bye.